Dust 514 bites the dust, H1Z1 is no longer going to be free to play at launch. All that and more, I'm Zach Sharps and this is Free to Play Weekly. First up in the news this week, posted on the Dust 514 forum, CCP Games community team member Frame informed fans that Dust 514, the PlayStation 3 exclusive ground-based shooter spin-off of EVE Online, would cease operations as of May 30th. It is really not a surprise that CCP would rather focus their limited resources on their renowned EVE Online, especially with Project Legion, their next big update to the game, on the way. Sad for fans of the game, but good news for EVE Online players in my opinion. NeoWiz Games' MMO Bless Online is finally coming to Europe and North America according to a post on Bless Source. The developer is apparently in the final stages of contract negotiations with Western publishers, but as of right now there really isn't any information on exactly who that publisher will be or when the game will make it over to Western markets, but this is certainly a good sign for those anticipating the game. If you're curious about the free-to-play Korean MMORPG, I myself did a first impressions of the Korean version not too long ago, which can be found up on our YouTube channel. All I could say is I'm glad they aren't taking forever with the game, and I can only wonder if they will strip away the full-blown sex scene for a lower rating. Hmm. This week, Tryon Worlds has announced their first big content update for their newest free-to-play MMO, Davillion. The update titled Fury of the Tempest hits February the 18th and will bring with it a brand new class, which is the Tempest. The Tempest is a master of blades and skilled in acrobatics. Her weapons of choice are daggers that can combine to make a twin-bladed glaive. In addition to the new class, the level cap has been increased to 54, complete with new gear sets, a new raid dungeon, and two new archdevil dungeons. Overall, that's a good bit of content for you Davillion fans out there. Following the trend of games saying they will be free to play and then turning to the buy to play model, Daybreak Game Studios hopped on that bandwagon with their zombie survival game H1Z1. Not only that, but now H1Z1 will be split into two games. Yeah, two games. The first one, H1Z1 Just Survive, will be the survival mode portion of the game. H1Z1 King of the Kill will be the battle royale part. The kicker, each of them after February the 17th will be $20 a piece. But if you buy them now, you could snag H1Z1 for about $15 and once the conversion happens, you'll have both games. In any case, both titles will remain in early access for the time being, with King of the Kill launching fully on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One this summer, while Just Survive remains in early access for the remainder of 2016. Knowing Daybreak, these dates will likely change because H1Z1 has barely changed since its early access has started. It's time for the question of the week. Last week on the show, I asked you guys which game do you think should top revenue charts? A user by the name of Cyber Dynasty stated the following. I'd have to say Warframe. Digital Extremes is one of the very few MMO developers that hasn't had their souls sucked out by corporate greed. They deserve every penny they get and more because the things they do real money for are worthwhile payments that aid in making the game even more enjoyable. Thanks for your guys' responses. I figured most of you guys would say Warframe. Seems like a, there's a lot of love for digital extremes within the community. This week's question is, what do you think of the move that Daybreak made regarding H1Z1? Do you think it makes sense so they can focus efforts on two separate games with a more linear focus on each of them? Or do you feel it's just a blatant cash grab? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below and maybe, just maybe, you'll be featured on next week's show. Last up in the news this week, after months of problems related to the Hero Engine and a lot of back and forth with the creators of said engine, the repopulations developers have had enough and have stated that they shall move to the Unreal Engine 4. Despite the fact I've always felt the Hero Engine lacks the sexiness of other options on the market, this means a pretty big delay for the game. As the developers noted in their post on the future of the game, most of the assets will move over, but the code has to be rewritten from scratch. 
To remedy fans' ailments a bit though, the devs have decided to create a spin-off game set in the repopulation universe called Fragmented. This game will be a trimmed down version of the original game and will use already existing assets. It will also be given out as a free gift to those who already own the repopulation. Personally, I wish they made this move a long time ago. The Hero Engine made their game look really, really dated, and just by watching the trailer for Fragmented, you can clearly see that Unreal Engine 4 is leagues above the Hero Engine. It sucks we have to wait even longer for this hardcore sandbox title release though, but at least now, it will be worth the wait. What do you guys think of this move? Leave your comments down below. Well guys, that does it for the news this week. You all know the drill. Hit up the giveaways page, follow all of our social medias, and donate all of your bank accounts to us. Uh, just kidding. Although, I wouldn't really complain. As for myself, signing out until next week's show, I'm Zach Sharps, and I'll catch you guys next time.